So the house basically just works for itself. It lets the sun come in, it heats, in our case we have a, a masonry wood stove, it'll heat the thermal mass of, of rock and that then uh, in the, later in the day that emits the heat back into the house. We will use um, uh, reflective paint uh, radiant paint which will also help reflect the warmth back into the house and in the uh, in the winter and in the summer it helps to dissipate. Uh, the number of windows that we put in the house is going to be relative to how much heat is is also entering through those windows and how much heat is lost in the winter. So all these proportions and percents of openings and uh, thickness of walls and insulation and slopes of roof and um, any kind of materials that are absorptive and can and then hold the heat in the daytime and then emit it at night back into the house are all positive and important aspects of a, so, a passive solar design. And I think it's important to your points, Donna. It's, it's about one thing is about, uh, you know, putting, orientating the house to the sun, but it's also looking at, you know, again, when you say glazing, so we're 15% we're on the building envelope with glazing, um, um, and 50% of that 15% uh, is on the south side. So again, the way the sun works, in the summer and and so then we have um, oversized overhangs on the roofs as well and the reason they're there is in, in the uh, in the summer our sun sits high so the overhangs will shadow the sun from coming into the house um, so that'll that'll stop the solar the, the heat gain uh, in the winter um, our um, the sun is at a much lower elevation in the sky so that again to your point will bring in the heat So in behind that, we do have uh, uh, Rockwell R22 in behind there, and now we've we've applied this. And uh, before mechanical, traditionally it's done after mechanical is completed. But because we have a double wall construction, our our two by four wall is our mechanical wall. Anything mechanical is going to come up through that interior wall. So nothing will penetrate unless it's an exterior. Um, electrical or vent, an exhaust vent will not penetrate through. We've used a sealant to the floor system to seal it and then as we've run our, our, our main wall barrier up, we've sealed it as well. One of the other values that we have uh, specifically regarding this non-structural interior wall system is that it's uh, found inside of the control layers here for air and vapor. So if there are any um, requirements after the fact by a homeowner, uh, to uh, run any other cabling or electronic um, uh, data assemblies, what have you, they're running that inside of, a, of, of the control layer itself. So there's no potential for penetrating or breaking this and creating issues with uh, either condensation resistance or moisture movement. Um, so with the process here, um, what we'll do, instead of using shims all the way around, we are going to use uh, these window setting screws. Um, and then we will uh, we'll use a backer rod to seal on the furthest um, outside edge. And then we'll spray foam in there. And then we'll use a uh, pink bat insulation to chink in there. And then we'll end up using another Sega product um, from our uh, vapor barrier membrane to to seal to the to the jam. This is, this is substantially different than anything that the production industry or the standard custom home builder would be doing, from a materials perspective as well as from a sequencing and detail perspective. So it's it's not consistent with what we would see. It's it's a step above. <music>